Ortho Dental Procedures. In a dental office, there are routine appointments or more common appointments that you're going to be booking for. Either clients are going to come in and say, I need an appointment for this, or the dentist is going to give you the chart and say, please book this appointment, or any type of appointment. However it's booked, um, typically the dental receptionist is going to do that. So I'm going to go over the more common dental procedures that you might have in your dental office. Now again, if you are a dental professional currently, you can probably skip this module because I don't want to bore you because you know all about these. But even if you're a new dental receptionist, this will probably be helpful for you because I'm going to summarize it all up for you. And another thing to keep in mind is every dental office is different. So just because I'm teaching you all of the common procedures today, you might not do oral surgery, for example, in your office, or you might not do teeth whitening, but I'm going to teach you all of the common ones anyway. So let me share my screen for you guys right here. So this is part of your Google document that you all have. So feel free to open that up if you want to follow along. I'm just going to go through inside what your document says. So for dental examinations and cleanings. So this is basically when... Um, the dentist is doing the checkup. So you typically book this appointment though with the hygienist. So that patient is booked in the dental hygiene column, but the dentist just knows either before that appointment in the middle or at the end, he or she will be kind of going in there when they have a free moment to do the dental check. Think of when you last went to the dental office and had your teeth cleaned. The dentist comes in eventually to check your teeth, but your actual appointment wasn't booked in the dentist column, it was booked in the dental hygiene column. Always think, what room is that patient going to be in? And typically a dentist has one or two rooms or sometimes more, and the dental hygienist stays in one room, typically. Or if there's multiple dental hygienists in the office, then they might go into different rooms, but always think, where is that patient going to go? So for dental cleanings, dental hygiene cleanings, it's going to go in the dental hygiene column. Now, dental examinations are a little bit different. So dental examinations are maybe when they're just having the exam with the dentist, either for emergency purposes, a specific exam, or the client just has a question and they're booked only for a dental exam. This could be booked for 10 minutes or it could be booked for 20 minutes. That would be in the dentist column because only the dentist is going to go in there. In some offices though, it's booked in the dental hygiene column anyway because they have the room and then the dentist just comes in whenever they have a moment. So some Something to keep in mind. Um, dental x-rays. So x-rays isn't usually booked in just one appointment, but of course, every office is different. But if they tell you to just simply book x-rays, then you would just ask for how long, because that really does depend. Are they taking bite wings, which are those x-rays to check in between the teeth? Are they taking are they taking periapicals? Those are the periapical x-rays that just show a certain area. Maybe they're taking a panoramic x-ray where the patient has to stand and the x-ray goes around the head. So you learn a little bit about that too, don't worry. But in a dental office, they're going to teach you all of those things. The dental offices that I worked at, it was never just booked as an x-ray appointment. They would be seeing the dentist first for a dental exam. So I would book the dental exam in the dentist column and then and there would be a side note saying, take the following x-rays. Um, usually this is done at the dental hygiene appointment anyway, but let's say an x-ray was forgotten about or something happened and they had to come back. Any questions so far, you guys comment and let me know. Um, why is this? There we go. So for the filling, sorry, I'm just adjusting my screen slightly here. So for filling appointments, now depending on your office, you might have composite fill um, fillings, you might have amalgam fillings, there are onlays, inlays, but the more common ones are going to be composite and amalgam fillings. In some dental offices where I have worked, they didn't even do amalgam fillings because they just weren't popular, so they didn't even offer them. It was composite fillings only. So if you know you're booking a filling appointment, you do have to know if it's going to be amalgam or composite because the time is going to be different. And depending on how many teeth they're going to fill at that appointment and what surfaces, it could take 20 minutes or it could take two hours. It really depends. And the dentist will typically tell you or any, or any dental receptionist that's training you, um, 
depending on the tooth. So if one tooth is being booked, just book 20 minutes. If two teeth, well, maybe 30 minutes is fine, depending on the number of surfaces because they're in that area anyway. If it's in different arches, maybe book 40 minutes. When in doubt, you guys, ask. Never be afraid to ask. You would be amazed how eventually it just comes like second nature. And every dentist is different too. So for a one surface filling, say a three six occlusal, um, I'm in Canada, so that's how we say our tooth numbers. Um, but let's just say an upper molar a one surface and a occlusal filling. That might take one dentist 10 minutes or it might take the next dentist 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you just never know. So if it doesn't say in the chart how much time they need, then I would just simply ask. Moving on to tooth extractions. So this is always going to be booked with the dentist. And I forgot to mention you guys, our previous category, a filling appointment is always booked with the dentist. In fact, when in doubt, it's going to be booked with the dentist unless I tell you other otherwise, such as a dental hygiene cleaning but or a teeth cleaning. But let's just say if I don't mention it, it's going to be booked with a dentist. So tooth extractions booked with a dentist, it depends on what tooth they're taking out. It depends on if it's complicated or non-complicated. For example, if they booked in a child to take out a primary tooth, it's likely not complicated. If they booked in a patient that's having four of their wisdom teeth taken out and they're impacted and being put to sleep, I would consider that complicated. So I would ask on the level of complexity and then that will tell you how much time to book. It could be 20 minutes or it could be two hours. Root canals, of course, booked with the dentist. Now, root canal therapy, that is when they clean out the nerve of the tooth and they save the tooth, okay? People are typically very nervous when they have their root canal appointments. Usually, a root canal appointment is one or two appointments, sometimes even three. The first appointment is spent cleaning out the cavity and then cleaning out the nerve of the tooth, and this can take an hour to even two hours. The second appointment is re-cleaning the rest of that nerve of the tooth. It takes time sealing it up and then putting on a permanent filling. Sometimes if they can't do all of that in the second appointment, then that's why they need a third appointment. And if they're putting a crown on that tooth, then that's another story. A crown takes a couple appointments as well, which I'll explain in a little bit. So after a root canal appointment, um, once it's all clean, they would typically put on, sorry, I forgot to mention, a temporary filling in the first appointment. The second appointment is going to be the permanent filling or the crown or the third appointment, depending on how long it took them to clean out the tooth properly. So that is always booked with the dentist. Now for crowns, so I mentioned crowns. Crowns could be done, that is to add strength to the tooth. That can be done after a root canal. Maybe the patient has a very large filling in that tooth, so they need a crown to make it stronger. Maybe the tooth is cracked, they need a crown for that as well. The crown is booked with a dentist, typically a one hour appointment, could be two hours, it could be less depending on the dentist. The first appointment is all about prepping the tooth. The second appointment is then um, you have to send the temporary impressions, all of that off to the lab for them to make the crown. So then the second appointment is actually placing the crown over top. So how is everybody doing so far? Let me know. And bridges is like a crown, but like three crowns kind of stuck together, okay? So a bridge is when there's a missing tooth and you're putting a bridge over to replace the missing teeth. Those artificial teeth are going to be held in place by crowns on the adjacent teeth. I do have pictures in another video, so take a look at that if you're getting a little bit confused. And bridges, since there's more to it, is typically three appointments or just simply longer two appointments. Always booked with the dentist could be an hour or two hours. We're not talking though like 10 minutes here, 20 minutes. We're talking an hour or two hours. Dentures. This is different for every office for sure. Um, the offices I have worked in, we really didn't deal with dentures that much. We would refer them to a denture specialist. So any dentures we saw, it would just be basically to look at the denture. If they needed a new denture, we would take certain impressions and then send them to the lab and then refer them to the denturist. So when it comes to dentures, I would talk to your dental office because most these days just simply refer out, okay? 
dental implants. Kind of the same thing. These days, you would simply refer out to an oral surgeon to place those dental implants, or sometimes the dentist would do part of the procedure at the dental office, put in a temporary, and then they would go to the oral surgeon's office. It's hard to say. But implants are that surgical screw that goes into the bone and then a crown over top of it to replace a missing tooth. Definitely check out the video if you need to see pictures. Dental implants, another longer procedure, an hour or two hours, not usually done by the general dentist unless he has taken extra training for that, which a lot of them do because you can make a lot of money, but you have to be trained on something like that. Orthodontic treatment, kind of the same thing as well. A lot of dentists don't do orthodontic treatment because depending on where you live, they need to be referred to what's called a, you know, ortho specialist, with this, which is a orthodontist. So they specialize, they go to school for a lot longer, three or four years to become an orthodontist. So when the dentist says, hmm, this child will likely need braces, they are then referred to an orthodontist and then you don't have to do anything. You're just simply sending off the referral and they would go to that orthodontist for all appointments. They would keep see their dentists for like dental checkups, x-rays, things like that. But for any ortho appointments, you know, placing the braces, tightening them, taking them off would be done at the orthodontist. Teeth whitening. A lot of dental offices offer teeth whitening, but then I want to say a lot of them don't either. I'm not sure why. I love performing teeth whitening. It depends on the teeth whitening procedure that the dental office is using, and, it, and that's why it depends on time. Typically, it would be a one-hour appointment, but there are some longer ones that might take an hour and a half, so you might book an hour and a half or even two hours. It's hard to say. This is usually booked with a dental hygienist or even a dental assistant, not typically the dentist. It's not the dentist who does the teeth whitening. It's usually somebody else in the office. So check with your office how they like to do things. Dental veneers. So these are those thin fingernail-like shells that go over the teeth, front teeth only. This is booked with the dentist, an hour or two hour appointments, depending on how many teeth. These are made in the dental lab as well. So it's usually at least two appointments to prep the teeth, take impressions, send them to the lab, and then the patient comes back to get their permanent veneers cemented in, booked with the dentist. Um, gum disease treatment. So this is part of that dental hygiene appointment, a teeth cleaning. Any gum disease treatment usually means teeth cleaning, unless you're working for a periodontal office, which is a gum disease specialist office, basically, where they could do surgery underneath the gum line, different types of surgeries, um, gum um, grafts, things like that, but just gum disease treatment. Here we are specifically referring to scaling and root planing, which is teeth cleaning basically, booked with the dental hygienist. Um, oral surgery, so this is taking out the wisdom teeth, um, jaw surgery, implant placement. So we've talked about a lot of these things already. This is just putting it into a general category, oral surgery. Cosmetic dentistry, again, this is just a general cat, um, category. In fact, I'd say the rest of these are just general categories. Teeth whitening is considered cosmetic. Um, anything to improve their smile is considered cosmetic. Um, Again, a general category, it really depends on where you work, how they categorize things. Um, and that brings me to the next one, TMJ treatment. Typically, they are referred to an oral surgeon for this. Um, that's just basically looking at the TMJ area here. If their mouth is sore, if their jaw clicks and pops, things like that. Children's dentistry. There are dental offices that only see children for the more difficult children, the ones that aren't very co uh, cooperative or special needs children. And then sedation. So there are certain offices that will put patients to sleep and offer certain types of sedation. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope you're not falling falling asleep. I know that was a lot. Please let me know though if you have any questions and I will see you guys in the next video.